a one million dollar pool yes you heard me correctly a one million dollar pool and i know what you're asking yourself how the hell can a pool cost one million dollars well first off that's because we're not building the pool here at ground level we're building the pool up there over 30 feet out of the ground to capture this exceptional downtown view what we have to do first is put 30 inch that's 2.5 feet in diameter piers from the ground about 20 feet in the air then we're building a massive retaining wall filling it all with select fill and a huge slab on top and then we're building our pool essentially on top of a parking garage okay so this is day one of construction we got the bobcat down here a very perilous descent because if you can see there's these hills which is about 20 feet right here just from the ground so we got victor out here what he's doing right now is he's using the mini excavator to create a path so he's having to excavate some of this hillside so we have a path to get over to our working area then we can start digging into this and we need to dig out this whole area down to ground level. And those piers that I was talking about, 30 inches wide, they need to go five feet down into bedrock and all the way up to where the slab will be that our pool will sit on top of. We're starting week three. And honestly, a ton has happened. All of that dirt has been moved. We used all of that dirt and rock to make a large path down the side of this hill so that we can get other equipment in later. We're gonna need cranes, we're gonna need a sky track, which is a forklift with a 40 foot arm so that we can raise our steel I-beams and get a lot of the material up into the site. Now, in doing that, there was a massive amount of bedrock that we had to chip simply to just get down there. And again, this is great because when you're building a pool 30 feet out of the air, you wanna make damn sure that you're building it right on top of bedrock and that's exactly what we're doing. So I feel a lot more comfortable about that. As you can see behind me, we're building two archery towers so that our guys can guard while they work so that no one can disrupt us. In all seriousness, these massive towers need to be built for a variety of reasons. A, we're gonna need something a little more permanent and a little more stable just for scaffolding to get material up because everything's being built 25, 30 feet out of the ground. The other reason, and maybe the most important reason, is we need this so that we can shoot lines. Those will be by laser and by string so that we make sure that we're in line horizontally and vertically on all of our piers. So now that these towers are here, we're simultaneously digging. We've hit bedrock, but the engineer has specced that he wants our piers four feet into solid bedrock. So now we're having to chip at each pier site, and there's a number of piers in this whole area. So the next step is once we chip all of that, we're gonna get all the rebar in for the piers. Normally we would use a cardboard form called a sauna tube, where you just pour a pier for like a pier and beam foundation. These piers, a couple of them, go damn near all the way to the top of this foundation. So we're gonna have to use custom steel forms that snap on to make a cylindrical shape to where we can then pour the concrete down inside of that form and it will all hold together and it won't spill out. So that in itself is gonna be a ton of bracing. It's going to be a lot of coordinating just to make sure that all of our concrete's intact while we pour it. Let me back up. A big part of all this is we're gonna get all of our rebar in and our structural engineer is gonna come out, inspect everything before we do our first pour, which will be for all of these piers. So undoubtedly, wherever you have to dig, there's gonna be some crucial lines there. That's just how construction goes. So we hit sprinkler lines, a main water line, and a main drain line. So we had to basically turn off the water on multiple occasions. Once that main drain line was cut, it made the septic tank pump seize. So we had to replace that pump. We had to repair all those lines, but you can actually see them over here. We know exactly where they're at. They're fixed as of right now. And then as we're building, we may or may not have to reroute those. I cannot emphasize enough the scale of this project. I am all the way up here. If you look at it from ground level, even to where I am, 
This is pretty damn high. We still have to go up there. That's where the top of our pool will be. So standing up here looking down, thinking about two and a half feet in diameter piers coming all the way up to damn near this level. So our pool is about six feet deep and then we have an eight inch slab and then we have 30 inches of grade beam. So really from there, we're talking about eight, maybe eight feet down from the top. That pier is gonna come all the way out of the ground. It's gonna be absolutely insane. So then what we have to do is we have to build a retaining wall like a box around all of these piers. And then we're gonna tie those back together with the grade beams and the foundation on top. In the middle, we're gonna compact select fill every eight inches so that all of these piers and this foundation is stable all the way around vertically and horizontally. It's really just mind blowing to me that all of this earth was not here just a few weeks ago. All from just that area, we are talking about literally hundreds and hundreds of tons just from the area that we've excavated. So we're gonna have to get all of this off site before we get out of here. And it's gonna be interesting to see how many dump trucks we load up to haul this away. Okay, so next up is this is a mad race to get these piers dug. Once we get them all dug, which is gonna be pretty laborious, we have to chip through four feet of rock for each one of them. Then we can get our rebar in, we can get our forms, get those poured. Once those are poured, it kind of literally and metaphorically lays the foundation for the whole project. So we also have to be very precise. Each pier is measured on the plan. The distance between them, where exactly they're located here. So we're gonna double and triple check this before we get any of our rebar or any of our forms in. All right, y'all, well, we've built our massive tower of batter boards out here to set all of our lines, make sure everything's plumb and level. The next focus is getting all of our piers dug, getting all the rebar in, getting that inspected by our engineers so we can then pour those piers because that's literally and metaphorically gonna set the foundation for the rest of this project. Now, follow along this $1 million pool build. If you're not already subscribed, you better hit that subscribe button because we got way more awesome videos coming up and you are not gonna wanna miss when we start finishing this baby out and putting the beautiful touches on this masterpiece.